Now, when it comes to using a guide scope, some of the main benefits of this is that it's very beginner friendly. It's a completely separate rig that has nothing to do with your main imaging rig. So this reduces the complexity. And because that secondary telescope that you put on is often going to be smaller and have a shorter focal length, you're going to get a wider field of view than what you would do if you use an off-axis guider. And this means you have more stars to choose from to find some that are perfect good for guiding. The biggest drawback from using a guide scope is what's called differential flexure, where because the secondary scope is just screwed on the side of the main scope, they can sometimes move ever so slightly. And what that means is if there is a slight bit of movement while you're guiding, then all of a sudden your computer thinks the telescope has moved while it hasn't actually, that's going to move the main scope, even though it wasn't actually necessary. So this can introduce error and it can introduce inaccuracies in your guiding. The second drawback of using this is we are attaching a full second telescope that adds weight and dependent on your telescope design you're going to have to put your guide scope out on the side maybe at a weird angle and that subtly makes the telescope a lot more difficult to balance if you're using a German equatorial mount because now the weight is shifted not really going down the center of the telescope anymore then balancing it can be quite a chore and can actually be quite difficult. 